um, Jim wants on. That's hilarious. Uh, hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to, uh, if you guys are not familiar, this is Joshua Moon, also known as Null, the proprietor of Kiwi Farms, among many other entities. How are you doing? <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, so, and I, I, I didn't. I, it's, it. I meant it truly. You have a lot of experience of uh, a lot at, at, at the legal world at this point in time in your, you know, your story career. I'm sure you didn't expect that when you started all this. Um, yeah, there's, um, there's like an expression like serial litigant. That's how you describe someone who sues people yes. constantly. I'm a serial defendant. I think yeah. is the, is a new category of person that I fall into. I, I think so. I think that's very true. You're, you're very much a, uh, yeah. You're, you're. There's a brand new guy threatening to sue me, pro se. I don't even want to mention him because I think he's out for attention. But as oh, a, yeah, oh. I can't out of nowhere because <laughs> I don't want to get into it. But it's like I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you about it. I'll talk to you about it later. Yeah. That way you don't have to. Um, so you listened to it. Um, what did you think so far? Okay, for um, I well, I thought that Monty's attorney, he didn't sound very opposing, which I know is like a superficial thing, but yeah. I think that matters a lot to people. Sure. Yeah, he kind of he kind of like a mush mouth, which I, I shouldn't I shouldn't say ever, but um, it was definitely I don't know they they grilled him really hard, and the one thing that they they the guy on the the first panelist, the guy on the left, he asked him a question that was like, why should it be in Minnesota instead of Colorado? Doesn't it sound like forum shopping? And you would yeah. hope that when you're at, going to the appellate court, I think this is the appellate court, right? To, to, to do oral arguments that you would have a canned oh. response for that because that's like the question <laughs> like yeah. that's the question that you're answering um and he kind of like froze in in response to that question like whoa that's bad because that should be you know you should that should be like the the, the question you're prepared to answer in total um and then yes. Randazza gets on, and he literally just like he walks up, he hits the dab, and then everyone claps for him. <laughs> That's it. There's well, no... I mean, there's something to be said about having that experience. And Randa, okay, okay, guys, you guys are saying that Ethan, both Ethan and Ralph and Jim went on. Okay, that would be hilarious. Uh, but no, it's, well, I don't know how I get a hold of them really at this point. Anyway, um, that's funny. But no, I think for Randaza, he shows up in places. You know, this is this is not abnormal for him. He shows up. He's out of town. Talent. You know, he comes in and you know has to knock it down. So he's very comfortable in his own skin. And he's obviously older than the other guy. And that doing this a million times makes you better at it. Just being there, being in that situation. And I, I think they were not prepared. And ultimately, I think they were a little unprepared for the court being as receptive to the forum shopping argument. I don't think they were anticipating that to be as uh, – because they're even saying, like, well, do you think we got it right? Like, the, the Supreme Court of Colorado got this right. Yeah. And instead of just saying, well, it's co – a lot of times they'd say, well, hey, it's our law. That's what we're, we're bound by. But I, I think they were – they they think there's something to be said there about is this a forum shopping issue. Now, whether or not they decide on that, they were very interested in talking about it, and I don't think they were ready for that as in-depth as it happened. Yeah, maybe not. Um, yeah, yeah, like I was, I was just, I was kind of my my main gripe was just that he didn't have an answer for the the uh, why should it be in Minnesota? Because I was under the assumption, mm -hmm. and I was shocked that he didn't bring this up, that you can always sue somebody in their state if they commit a crime on the internet or a tort on the internet, mm -hmm. and you can always sue them in their state. That's what I because I I for yeah. for various reasons I've had pretty complicated discussions regarding jurisdiction recently and um that, mm -hmm. that's obviously one of your main considerations because i'm a floridian living mm -hmm. uh place unknown <laughs> i have businesses in wyoming and every other state in the 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 u.s and then you know the the <laughs> defendants are in two other states that i have no conduct in so it's like well where do you sue yeah. and i i had been informed that you can always sue in the state where the the Court originated so I, why it's a question that he can't sue in minnesota it kind of eludes me to begin with well he, ultimately he can he can and the, the the one judge pointed out he said i do federal court all the you know he's like i was a federal court practitioner we he said you could i could do what you're doing but he said almost all the time we filed where the plaintiff lives and if especially if that was where the tort occurred as well 
so for Monty, you know, he was in Colorado, and I know Monty's saying that he lives in Illinois right now, and I'm not getting into that. But wherever it is he wanted to live at or was living at is where typically you file the action. It's always easier. You take advantage of that. So, like, for example, like Russell Greer, like why he filed in Utah versus Nevada makes no sense to me because he lives in Nevada. Why not he was file living, there? It, that case has been going on for so long. I'm yeah. pretty sure that he was living in Utah when it oh, happened. Oh, he was at the time? Yeah. Oh. The same, and same has El Monte, I think, now lives in Illinois, but he wasn't living in Colorado at the time, which yeah. to me, I mean, it's like that should have been his go-to. Why, why file in Minnesota? Uh, plaintiff plaintiff is transient. He lives in a different state than Colorado mm -hmm. now. So if you remanded this back to Colorado, that wouldn't make any sense because he doesn't live there anymore. Yeah. Uh, his well, is an online presence. He does yeah. all this stuff online. He you know that's his business. So it, it doesn't make it makes yeah. more sense to sue where you know the the defendant's going to be than where the plaintiff yeah. is. Yeah, and and I and I and I don't disagree with that. But a lot of times though, you file where, and yes, that's true. But I also think the court's saying, but yes, you could. They, they they obviously were attuned to the idea that Minnesota's state law applications are far more favorable to Monty than, you know, even Colorado or I don't know what Illinois are, but I'm sure they're Illinois, Illinois, if you're French, if you'd like to call it that. Um, that's that, that's something they're at least noticing now, whether yeah. or not they. I mean, I'm sure it was forum shopping, like, to be yeah. real. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it, but like I told Monty, it's an issue of. It's not wrong. It's a question of what's right or wrong. It's just a question of is this the right fit? Is this the best way to do it? Um, yeah. When I took when getting ready for the bar, there was this multiple choice part of it, and they would have questions, and you'd look at two answers, and they're both really good, but they'd say you have to pick the more correct answer. And I always hated that shit because if they're both right, they should work. But when it comes to the conflicts of law issue, in this case, one of it's not an issue of one's right or wrong. One of them is a little more correct than the other, and it's an issue of is it Minnesota? Is it Colorado? So well, they my both question work. Is, if they're going to send this back to district mm -hmm. court, they're sending it back to Minnesota district court to apply Colorado anti slap Yes. That's insane. That, that mean, happens. That should, be, that, should, that should be your defense. That's insane. Well, Why the fuck would you do that? <laughs> well, I mean, well, Josh, like you and I can enter a contract and we could say the forum of choice is Texas and we'll be arguing Rhode Island law. You could do that. It's utterly insane to do that, but you can agree to have that maybe be a term. You know, th there's there's all kinds of ways you can agree to the choice of laws, the form of laws, the proper form to try a case in. So that's entirely it's yeah. dumb, but you can do it. And yeah, that's, that's that is dumb because you're just you're just complicating matters for absolutely everybody involved. Not a single person is spared misery in that case. Well, there's there's always reasons for it, though. I, I've seen that happen once or twice and stuff I've run across. There was a reason for it. And once the reason was explained to me, made some sense. But I still thought it was dumb as hell. And in this situation, even if Nick wins here, he could still lose because the court could say, OK, well, I'm going to apply it. And nope, it's still defamation, I think, per se, has been met. Go on a discovery. Oh, that would be the funniest outcome. The funny I always root for the funniest outcome. The funniest outcome mm -hmm. is that he spends all this money on this appeal mm -hmm. asking novel questions of law to try and alley oop some kind of weird precedent for Colorado law mm -hmm. being applied in Minnesota and then succeeds and then it's applied and the judge is still like, Well, this is still defamation. <laughs> yes. No, it, 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 it can it can th that's the thing. Like it, it's not a guarantee because even in Colorado, oh you say well, you don't just it, it doesn't you know, people think you get to go anti-slap and you drop the mic and that's it. You can still lose even with the protections provided by an anti-slap statute. It, it's just um, very scary because if you lose an yeah. anti-slap, then you owe fees. And that's unique. That's what, that's the reason yes. why Vic Mignano owes half a million dollars now. It's because he lost yes. against anti-slap, which is uh, – it exists basically to, to scare people into not filing unless they – you know, unless it's like a surefire victory, basically. Or yeah, where they've got the money they're willing to lose. So, <laughs> and 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 you know, that's that's also the option there. But yeah, the other big part of anti slap is generally they're pretty robust and you can get away with a lot of things, but it's not bulletproof. 
it depends on the state. I don't know. I'm not familiar with Colorado's, mm -hmm. but for instance, I am familiar a little bit with Massachusetts. And Massachusetts has an anti slap law, but it's so weak. It basically doesn't exist. Um, mm -hmm. And the same is with Virginia. Virginia has anti slap, but mm -hmm. Virginia's anti slap is so weak that it, it effectively does not exist. Um, ah. So there are anti slap. Texas is an, like an outlier. Like they, I think even. Um, because I had Harden look into this. The the Texas, because I, I asked him what how what what really fucked up that case. So he looked into it for me, just out of his own personal curiosity, mm -hmm. uh, his educational purposes, and he came to the conclusion that the Texas law was actually insane, and they changed it specifically mm -hmm. because of this case. Like they made it less severe than it is oh. it was when Vic filed. Hmm. Well, I mean, on the plus side, it served a public policy purpose. <laughs> I mean, how charitable. <laughs> I mean, that's sometimes that's, you know, it's, it's the, it's like the epilogue, like, sure, you may have lost, but they changed history forever. Oh, I, um, my work, someone asked in chat, no, I don't pay him for random questions. Um, cause he has, he has an interest in, in intellectual curiosity and in the random things I ask him. So he does not, he, he is merciful and does not bill me for the random bullshit I, I grill him with. That's, that's really nice of him. It is. It's it not is. A lot, um, a lot of attorneys won't. Yeah. No. It's true. It's um. It's it's a godsend having him around because he is uh. I wouldn't say ideologically aligned, but he is like, he finds everything about my predicament fascinating and amusing. So he, he um, he enjoys it. <laughs> so he doesn't he doesn't tend to bill me for things he doesn't have to. Okay. Um. Walter Malone for 199 is ask as a question for you. What makes a proper lol cow? Proper lol cow does not learn from his mistakes. That is the core defining feature. The person will walk into a rake over and over again. Um, added bonus if people try to help them and they continually throw them off and say, No, I will step on this rake. I know what I'm doing. Trust me. Yeah. And then uh, Wendy Carter for 15, uh, I don't know what that is, is saying, Jim promises years ago if he ever ends up at court, he will be fully clad in a Nintendo Labo suit. Perhaps the time has come. He'll be in a bubble. He'll be like in a well, hamster wheel all the time. Well, that's what I... I don't know if you heard me. I, he, he'd come rolling in a court in his wheelchair with like a t-shirt gun full of hats and just start pelting the crowd with them. <laughs> the judge jumping up to grab a, a Medicare hat from the camera. Everybody would. He'd be great. Yeah, uh, I was making a joke about how the, the driveway battle will take place in the courtroom. The bailiff will have to arrest like 100 people for for conduct because they just break out into a brawl. Yes. The entire the well, bleacher, the, like the entire audience is just packed with like internet weirdos. Oh, yeah, it just turns it's an IBS reunion. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it'd be so good. It'd be so good. Um, Always with the hamsters. Yeah, yeah. Just like Richard Gere, always with the hamsters. No. They're nefarious hamsters, hamster purposes. Yes. Yes. Well, Demon's Wrath says, no stalker child is you who's stepping on the rakes. Did you, uh, so I made a, I made a joke about how, um, cause I was, I, I set them up unclean hands. And I'm like, the only thing that Montegraff really did to Ricada prior to what he said mm -hmm. is that he was like Photoshopping him into the sweaty squad sausage memes. Do you remember yeah. those? I remember those. Did, did those enter into a court document? I don't. Not so yet. They did. Oh, I don't recall seeing that. Well, I think they may have been referenced. Oh, okay. I don't think I, they, no, I I don't think they were like Rindazzo's exhibit A. Filings to include, okay. yeah, exhibit A, the sweaty sauce. This is not defamation yeah. because, uh, Your Honor, exhibit A, the sweaty. S s yeah. I can't even say it. It's like an alliteration. The sweaty sausage squad yes. meme. I mean, here's a yeah. picture of my my defendant photoshopped into an egghead, and he's holding up a, a sausage that he grilled. Yes, yeah, and like I said, I I'm going to try to avoid stepping into that arena too much. But yeah, I don't think there was there was just a there were there were references to it in the filings. I don't think it was an actual filing. With it, well, I mean, I mean uh, what what surprises me is that a lot of people in chat seem to not understand what Riketa said. Mm -hmm. Can I mention that? Can I mention what Ricky you, said? You can say, like I said, I won't comment on it just because I'm okay. involved in it. But yeah, you could say whatever it is you want to say. Okay. So um, I think that a lot of people are under a 
serious misunderstanding that back in the day, Montagraph had a couple trolls because he's always been like a weirdo, right? So people uh, fucked with him. He put, self-published a bunch of homemade vi videos. Um, and then some trolls on the internet said that these were snuff films, even though they're obviously just like home movies. Um, and that's, uh, and I think one of the characters in his films is like a minor that is like a runaway from home. So it was like, oh, this is a snuff film and this is supposed to be a child, even though it's clearly an adult woman. So this is shallow pornography is what they said. Um, so people kind of misunderstand so that because Riketa reiterated that he was, or so that he was a pedophile, that these rumors are the originating claim and therefore you can't, you, you can say that uh, he's a pedophile all day long. Uh, that's not true because what Riketa said is actually completely different than the original rumor. Riketa went out and said that Montagraph always liked sucking little baby penis, which is not related to his movies. It was not an existing claim. It was literally something that he came up with on the top of his head to uh, make fun of Monty on the live cast while Monty was in the chat. Uh, so, and then when when asked about this, hey, he liked real my, quick. Yes. Hey. Apparently, Ethan, apparently Ralph really is in chat. Do you? Uh... I don't think that that's actually Ralph. Uh, well, some go somebody. Off. Well, no one of one of my people that is telling me it's him. I don't think it is because he would he would tweet about it or something. Oh, I well, I don't know. I thought well, is he is he not tweeting? Because oh, here, let me look. I'll let you keep going. I'm gonna look but, real yeah. quick. Finish my thought because yeah, he sorry. lied to my face about this, and he said it was a um a statement that could not possibly be defamation because. He said probably, which I guess is like a weasel word. You can say it probably is a pedophile, and therefore that's not defamation. But he didn't. He said the exact opposite. He said literally the exact opposite of, of probably. Um, so he knows that what he said was stupid, and he deliberately lies and misleads people about what he said because he knows that that's defamation per se. And he knows that he doesn't have. And when he retells the story, because now he says, well, I have to. Uh, say that he is a pedophile um, because he sued me. That is the only logical thing for me to do is to say that he's a pedophile. Um, but, but he never reiterates his actual original claim because he knows it's it's bad and he knows he can't defend it. I'm not lying. That's literally what happened. Actually, he, he, I've never heard him reiterate the original thing that he says. He... Um, he will say that Montagraph is a pedophile, but he'll never actually, word for word, repeat his original claim that is actually the question, the legal question. It's probably not defamation. Yeah. What could you, I'm, yeah. if you, if saying that someone's like gives oral sex to babies, what could you, is not defamation? What could possibly be defamation then? Like, what can you say about somebody that's not defamation if that's not defamation? I, I don't know, Nolan. Like I said, I, I don't want to... I know you're probably asking more hypothetically, but it's like, yeah, yeah it's a, that's a very good life. question. Very like, good ask question. yourself, if that's not defamation, yeah. like, what is? And if someone said that about you, what would, how would you feel? If someone said that to you, so it went online, someone with... At the time, Riccardo was at his height, so this is a person who was speaking to 100,000 people at a time, said that you sucked off babies... How would you feel? <laughs> would you feel yeah. that your reputation was damaged because of this? Or would you say, well, First Amendment, bro. No, I probably wouldn't. You'd probably be upset. Yeah. And then uh, also Parallax has a question for you. Um, sorry to switch gears and all, but he asked this, and I don't want to forget it. Are you proud boss man seems to be thriving a little bit? Oh, I'm, I'm very happy. He even pays his mods. That's, that's he awesome. He pays his mods. Um, I'm very happy that boss man's... Um, <laughs> has with all the, I was, I told, I told the guy that told me about him because Bossman had less than a thousand subscribers when I knew him mm -hmm. and, um, or found out about him. And half of those subscribers were just people fucking with him and making bot accounts, um, which stake eventually <laughs> fixed, but thousands of his followers are fake subs that are, um, controlled by a group of people that, that I mm -hmm. had talked to that, um, but not anymore because they, they, they hired a service. So all of his subscribers now are like real accounts. But back when I first found out about him, the majority of his accounts were bot accounts. Hmm. Um, but I, I, was, I told him when he told me all this, if I talk about this guy on stream, I can tell you right now he's going to blow up because it's very, very, very funny. And it's very funny to the point where you can take a random clip of Bossman and show it to anybody in the world and they will laugh at this guy.
because it's it's just like you don't need context you don't need his background you don't need any information about him you see him throw money on a, a casino game and lose and go what the fuck how is that possible and you just laugh because <laughs> because like obviously that's a, it's a casino game that's what that's actually what it's designed to do is to take your money um but yeah i'm very very happy that he has not like changed at all with his publicity he seems completely like willingly ignorant to the following that's accruing around him and he just sees the sub count go up and he thinks thank god more gambling money <laughs> you know what i mean yes yes and then uh wow there's you guys are just chugging along out here tonight and what else is there um d zone d is saying but how would monica prove damages if it's per se damages are presumed when you you know for example if you're being accusing somebody of criminal conduct there's a presumption you're dam you've you've caused damage to them you caused them harm because it's a serious thing the amount that you crime. have to pay because i know that defamation per se is a thing and people seem confused yeah. that like when it's such an egregious claim mm -hmm. like i think there's a couple things like you committed a crime such as yeah. raping a child and you have hiv mm -hmm. those are like the two things that are defamation per se yeah um and they just uh, assume damages i'm not sure how they do that well you will the da well you well you assume damages but you have to quantify the damages still so does that make sense like there there's you you've, you've already met the burden of you caused harm mm -hmm. but then you have to quantify the harm so does that does that make sense with that yeah so, so now you have to prove you have to, so it's it's not it's kind of like if you got in a car accident it's like we we presume you got hurt we presume you have a broken leg but just now, what's the cost of that broken leg, pain and suffering, punitive Are damages? Are fees a part whatever. of that, if it's per se? Uh, I think per se, I, it depends on the state. I mean, fees could be part of it. Attorney's fees could be part of it under statute yep. or under case law. It's a typical thing. But I think they'd have to ask for it. And I think they asked for it in their motion or their complaint anyway. So, I, you know, they covered that base. But I mean, so you, even if it's like to, one dollar, it's like well, but that's, that's like embarrassing. <laughs> well, what that police officer case that's cited in the stuff, they talk about that. There was defamation per se, but the guy only got like seven hundred bucks. Yeah, because it was a, and that's a, it's not the one dollar nominal damage, but it's also, well, if seven hundred dollars is all you're getting, the jury didn't think it was that big a deal. So that's where they determine you've suffered harm. So we don't need to find you've suffered harm anymore. But we, you have to show how much harm you've suffered. Yeah. Because um, otherwise yeah, the jury doesn't know what to do. If you don't tell them how much. I think part of the relief is just having the court say that this is like defamation. You know, it just winning is in, in part part of the relief. Oh, yeah. And well, no, that's where the nominal damages come in. Like, well, they say you're right, but this is ridiculous. You know, yeah. that that's the, uh, you know, I, I, as my professor once said, that when you get the nominal damages, it's saying like, you're right, but why the fuck are you here? Uh, verdict. Is what they that's their way of saying it. Um, yeah, and KRS Monty for him, when, winning one dollar might be enough, winning a million dollars might be enough. I don't know. I a don't million know. Million dollars. Oh no, don't wish him well, a million dollars. You know what that means. Yeah, I, I forget my, my apologies out there. Yes, I don't want to wish ill on anyone. I wish Monty nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars. Well, <laughs> well, you were wish, you, well, I mean, you were wished a million suicides though. So, oh no. <laughs> uh we're 238 for five dollars saying how is it that nick said different from what nola said about dick and Vito on live stream mm, okay so i can back this up i have said before that um you should not call someone a pedophile unless you have evidence for it you should not call someone a pedophile because pedophiles deserve to be killed uh, if you call someone a pedophile you should be so convinced of this that you would be willing to take a gun and shoot them and sleep soundly afterwards um, I am completely and totally convinced that Vito Giswaldi is a pedophile, and I believe that if it were up to me, if Joe Biden convicted him of pedophilia and said, Josh, you're the only guy for the job, we need you to take the, um, this Colt 45 and kill him. You're the only person I can think of that, that can carry out this sentence as, as found in a court of law. I would say, Mr. President, it would be my distinct honor and privilege to execute the functions of state and in Vito Giswaldi's life, because I do believe truly that he's a pedophile. And I believe this uh, because he said that he is a pedophile multiple times repeatedly in different contexts. I, I just say, yes, Vito has a long history of saying, I'm not joking. I really will do this. And it's. Yeah. yeah. As far as Dick, I don't know if I've directly called Dick a pedophile, but I think that mm -hmm. like it's it, it's very suspicious, like the shit that he's up to, like his interests, just his his visceral 
bizarre repeated interest in like getting involved in pedophile like shit and controversy it's like why why do you do this it, it, i don't I, I don't know if i've ever said like but he skews me out like real bad yeah and then uh oh this is an old one fatty caddy for five dollars saying would you choose josh or nick if you had to pick someone to give legal advice but not be a lawyer um i i i i probably ask my dad instead <laughs> i'll go i'll go option three Is your dad Let's, a lawyer? No, he's not a lawyer. That's why I said I'd ask him. Oh, it can't be a lawyer. Okay, I got you. Yeah, that, that's why I would ask my dad. No, I'm like the first lawyer in my family. It's like, if I don't know what this all entails, I'm like, I'm not sure I would have done all this. Being a lawyer. It's like, it's a lot different than I expected. I imagine it's very boring. Like, you in your head, you know that movie where Santa Claus gets put on trial in New York City? Mm -hmm. And there's like the big, like a third of that movie is just the courtroom scene where it's like silly and they bring in reindeer into the court and stuff. Yeah. Imagine that prospecting lawyers, imagine that courts like that, but then it's mostly just like filing bullshit. And then yeah. you have like one day, one hour to give oral arguments and then you're back to filing yeah. bullshit for another year. Um, Kind of like that. I mean, I, you know, you watch shows like Franklin and Bash and I'm like, if, if, if it was one, one thousandth, as cool as anything they've ever done or any of those shows i'm like this would be a really this would be like the best job ever and overall it's not too bad but yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of drudgery but every once in a while you get to do something cool and you're like oh my god that was neat like i had a case where uh i got to argue it recently it was a this lady got accused of uh taking a swing at her mother-in-law and I got to argue First Amendment grounds for it, that it was like fighting words and she was provoked to fight. And it was cool. I got to do like I call it doing Clarence Darrow stuff, like really making a real argument for once, not just like, oh, well, you know, maybe she deserved it. But, you know, she's protected <laughs> and she was provoked. And this is not something in society we could tolerate. And the judge was like, yeah, I'm not buying that. Still convinced of <laughs> but I, it was fun. I got to do that. I got to write these briefs and it was you know, citing the First Amendment in a like it was fun. It was that that was the neat part. I feel like being a lawyer would only be fun if you're already financially independent, so you can take on whatever bullshit you want to. And, and oh well, yeah, that part of it would be a lot of fun. Yeah, but if you if you have to like hustle and grind and like put up your billboards, like were you charged with DUI? Call us first. Yeah. Like that that part of it is probably not very fun, especially when you have like absolute like crackheads like walk into your office and like try to talk to you about the how they've been like arrested for possession of child pornography mm -hmm. and you're like oh fuck <laughs> no there is the, <laughs> i don't want to deal with you yes yes wondering where you're and I, I know people are going to laugh but wondering you're wondering where the next meal comes from is always yeah it's like a shark okay you ate but now you're like okay what am i eating next what am i eating next yeah there's that part's not fun but i will say i've you know it, it's I've learned more about running a business doing this lawyer stuff than I have you know, anything else I've done in my life. So also Alyssa's here. How are you doing, Alyssa? I thought Alyssa got banned. No, Alyssa she's back. Out. She's back. She picked her up and threw her in the bin. <laughs> Bam. No, she came back pretty quick. I'm not sure what happened there. I think they realized whatever it was, wasn't uh harassment. I always wonder if Ricardo does stuff like that or just like his fans, because he, he does still have fans, and they let me know in the comments of my archives of all my podcasts <laughs> that they still are still out there. They still got uh, his back. Okay. Also, guys, I did the uh, the, the tallies <laughs> over. What you see? No, just the, you just like I must have had a lot of cases. <laughs> yeah, that's that's no, I know no. that's what I say. Well, that I'm going from what I said really fast <laughs> just made me laugh. <laughs> Oh well, yeah. Somebody's saying you must. Sean must be eating a lot. Well, not cases, sadly. Oh, you got distracted. Okay, I got you. You got distracted. By yeah. That. <laughs> so, um, when I said, "What will the court do as far as the uh, poll options go?" One one thousand six hundred votes. Thanks, guys, for participating. Death by melon, six percent. In favor of Monty, seventeen percent. In favor of Nick, thirty-one percent. And the court may order death by Baldo, forty-four percent. Yeah, I'm the waiting for winner. the part where Randazza like puts on the baldo as like a demonstration in the court to explain what it is. <laughs> you have to pay him a lot for that. That's going to really increase the fees of the court. That that would be great. That would be great. He uh, <laughs> courtroom demonstrations like so. How does this work? 
<laughs> oh, sorry, I'm just I'm still thinking of Rain Dazzle putting on the balls yes. on the court. <laughs> yes, and 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 the, and the judge will be like, uh, counsel, can you please step in front of the jury so they get a better look of how this works, sir? Now proceed. And like anything you demonstrate in front of a jury, your experiments you perform in court, you're supposed to be able to perform them beforehand and make sure it's performed right. So there's going to be a lot of dress rehearsals. So Mark will have oh, to yeah, use the ball it several times. times to make sure you can pull it off. <laughs> right. You don't because the last thing you want to do is you want to stand in front of the jury and then put it on the like the rubber band snaps and like crushes your yes. balls. Like <laughs> that's your entire yes. case out the window. <laughs> yep. Or, or, or the guy you picked up at the truck stop to use like starts vomiting everywhere. It's like, no, no, no. We get that out of your system. You got to give them Epicat before you put them on stand. Yeah. Uh, oh, somebody's asking. Um, Break contact too is saying um, for five dollars. Will I be? Will you be hiring me in the total retard war fund? I don't think you have any oh. problems in Ohio. So uh, if I if I have any problems in Ohio, I know who to turn to because um, there's a fun thing called it, it, even at like a bare minimum. There's a a fun thing that apparently wasn't used very often a couple of years ago, but now is everywhere. It's Prohoc Vice, I think is how you pronounce it. Yes. And um, yes. that's basically like if I have an attorney, because the law is basically the same kind of everywhere, except maybe Texas. Texas is probably very mm -hmm. different. <laughs> but um, if you need your attorney to represent you in a state that he's not licensed in, you ask another attorney to babysit your filings, and that's called Prohoc Vice. So if I need to file something mm -hmm. in Ohio, I can I can ask Sean to um, yeah. babysit my attorney. Yeah, no, that's the thing. Yeah, if like Harden had to come out here, sure, I'd, I'd show him around. It'd be all right. It's not a new thing. I'm just saying that apparently it wasn't used very often before the internet, and now during the internet era, lawyers well, go. Yeah, go but everywhere. that's because mainly things were limited to where you were. People weren't really. You know, all this would be all this would be nonsense. You, you didn't really go outside your like the town or county where you live for the most part. So. Yeah, it was like a novelty the internet. to see it, but apparently not. It, that's this is just how it was explained to me that it was a novelty once upon a time, and now it's everywhere. Yeah, no, no, yeah, it's very, it's very true. It's very true. That's the case. Um, yeah, I mean, like you want to see the corn get harvested? <laughs> I'll show you some corn getting harvested. Is there anything in Ohio? I'm trying to think. Is Cincinnati in Ohio? Yes. God, they filmed the first forty-eight there. Oh yeah. <laughs> and if, if you want to go be on the first forty-eight. <laughs> You can go to Ohio. <laughs> oh, I remember years ago I was down in I was down in uh Cincinnati and as my first wife, her friends, we were down there and I made a joke. I'm like, this looks like they filmed the first 48 around like in this neighborhood. And she's like, No, they were like two blocks down a couple of months ago. And I was like, Jeez. <laughs> I was like, Great. But yeah, there there's 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 not too much here. There's not too much here. I'll admit that, but that's the great part about it. Nobody ever wants to come here. Like you see those maps of everybody leaving California. Guess where those? Guess where that line doesn't go? Ohio. No, it just no, but it goes to fucking Idaho and Montana and Wyoming and Texas instead. It yes, ruins everything. Yes, and that's fine. I mean, stay no, away from Ohio. Fine. It's full. It's Stay fun. away from Ohio. It's full. Nobody we likes need, it. Here. We need to call a constitutional convention and repeal whatever the fuck it is in the Constitution that allows interstate. Um, travel without without like borders we need to get rid of that we need to deport the all the full faith and credit clause yeah yeah we need to get rid of that we need to deport all the californians oh no it, it, that would be very good and i feel bad for people in texas and idaho especially idaho it's really bad there like everything is so expensive um buffalo dan called he wants his baldo back mandy why do you have a baldo that's the question Okay, I need to go eat. Um, is there any any last questions? No, I think that's it. I think that's it. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, no problem. You guys, once Anytime. again, Null from the farms. See you, Josh. Oh, um, just one oh. more thing. I, yeah. I am I'm filing something in this week. I think is probably going to be public. Mm. Um, and it, it'll be it'll be fun because I don't I don't know. It usually doesn't happen this kind of filing. I, I don't know if that's a, a hint or not, but. It's very mm. rare, and it almost never goes through, but it's it's fun to do. Oh, I I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> right, so you I'm son gonna... of a bitch, you did it. 
Yeah, it's I'm I'm even requesting a copy of it uh, sent to me because I want it as like a, a token. Put it on your wall, like no. Oh, great! No, this will then we're then I'm really gonna have some stuff to review coming up. That'll be great. All right, thank you very much. All right, see you, see you, Josh. Bye. Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice.